Hello, it's Rachel, and this is topic 16 of our supervision curriculum, and we are covering naturalistic teaching. So oftentimes, when people talk about ABA, they often think of very structured programming and very uh, teacher-led um, sit at a desk, uh, do, you know, flashcards, maybe like a really structured um, system. But learning does not only occur within structured environments. And in fact, most of the learning for young children prior to them entering school really occurs in uh, much less uh, structured settings and much more naturalistic. Applied behavior analysis also applies and can teach in those types of settings. I find it helpful to sort of visualize a spectrum where on one side, we might have really structured teaching, um, instructor-led, um, you know, kind of more like your, your typical school type setting where now it's time to learn math and now it's time to learn reading and now it's time to do this all the way over here to a very naturalistic, unstructured, child-led uh, system where we are teaching and working on learning opportunities as they come up in the learner's interests, um, following along with what they are interested in. Now, neither one of these I think is, is exclusively the only way you should do things. And in my experience, a lot of times we're actually somewhere in between. It's not just one or the other. You might have um, a very uh, child-led interest that then you impose a little bit of structure on. Or you might have something that's more structured that you incorporate child interests into or learner interests into. So it's, it's a spectrum that we can travel all over. And so what we need to do is really determine what is the most appropriate way to teach a specific skill to a specific learner given all of the variables, right? So sometimes, our learners for certain skills might need a very um, structured, quiet, uh, distraction reduced environment where they can learn a new skill. And then it's gradually moved to a more naturalistic, um, uh, incidental opportunity as the learner builds fluency. However, not every learner needs to learn every skill in a very um, uh, structured setting. Sometimes our learners can learn certain skills within um, a, a less structured environment or in a naturalistic uh, environment. And so those also still fall under behavior analysis. Um, it's just the setting has changed and the approach for the learner, uh, for the instructor, the teacher, the adult has changed. Natural, naturalistic teaching um, uh, can aid in generalization. Uh, following the learner's lead and incorporating the learner's interest can increase motivation and engagement. Um, and naturalistic teaching involves moving beyond an instructor-directed approach to finding or creating opportunities to learn within everyday activities. So one reason why you might see more people do more structured approaches is because honestly, it's easier on the teacher to be teacher-led because you can plan everything in advance and then you can implement according to your plan. However, that may not be what's best for the learner. The learner may learn better if it's more learner-led, if the teacher is following the learner's lead and finding opportunities in the natural environment to create those learning opportunities. It requires the teacher or the instructor, the adult to be more flexible 
to have contingency plans and to make decisions very rapidly about how to create and capture those learning opportunities. So naturalistic teaching is more challenging um, for the person doing the teaching. Um, and that may be why you see more people doing more structured and less naturalistic because it's easier for them. Doesn't mean that that is how things have to be done or that that might not be the best strategy for a particular individual. So let's talk about naturalistic teaching and what that looks like. So generalization um, is a huge focus in naturalistic teaching because you are teaching within the environment and with the materials that the learner is going to be using regularly. Instead of teaching colors on flashcards, I might be using the colors of the cars that the learner likes to play with. Great, they are learning the colors within an activity that they are already engaged in and with toys and items that they engage with in, um, on a regular basis. When those concepts get mastered, the learner can demonstrate that in the natural environment right away instead of us having to program a little bit more for that generalization because they were already able to learn across environments or in the environments where they need those skills. When we are selecting the targets, the, the goals for our uh, programming or the skills we want to help support our learner, um, we want to focus on developmental sequences, behavioral cusps that allow the learner to contact those natural learning opportunities and reinforcers. That's not to say that those aren't also the way that things are selected in a more structured approach, but specifically in naturalistic teaching, you have to uh, focus on behavioral cusps, those behaviors that open up a lot more opportunities. So imitation might be a priority because once my learner can imitate, then there's all of these other natural opportunities where imitation will help them to learn, right? So it, it plays into how you're selecting your goals. We also still use the three-term contingency. When in behavior analysis, we talk about the three-term contingency and that's that antecedent behavior consequence or stimulus response stimulus, right? And then there's motivating operations all around it. But um, that three-term contingency uh, is what we use when we're doing really structured teaching, because we're gonna say the teacher says this, and then the learner will do this, and then this is how we will reinforce. The, you still break down skills into ABC, stimulus response stimulus in naturalistic teaching. However, you might emphasize different aspects. So in structured teaching, you might, um, focus on how the learner's responding and what uh, type of reinforcement or what the schedule of reinforcement is, because you're not going to change the antecedent, right? Because that's what you're programming for. In naturalistic teaching strategies, the antecedent is the part that we're like, not programming, right? Because we are following the learner's lead. We don't know exactly what's going to pop up or how things are going to uh, set up these learning opportunities. But when the learning opportunity occurs, then how can we, um, you know, what, what skills should we focus on? And how can we support the learner in learning those skills? And what would be the response so that it flows with um, the activity that they're already doing. So the focus on the parts is a little bit different depending upon whether you're doing a structured or uh, a more naturalistic uh, learning opportunity. Um, 
as we talked about already, in contrast to more structured teaching uh, strategies, naturalistic teaching is based upon the learner's interests and their routines. So instead of the instructor determining when it's time to work on a goal, like now it's math, now it's reading, now it's this, a more naturalistic uh, strategy would be following the learner's interest and then going with whatever the learner's interest in, we might be incorporating multiple goals into playing with cars or making a sandwich. We might be incorporating a lot of goals into that. And so they might be more interspersed, um, but we're following the learner's lead. The environmental arrangements are very important in naturalistic teaching. So the environment, we set it up to create opportunities for the learner to demonstrate their preferences and their interests. Environmental arrangement includes both the physical environment, the positioning of the instructor in relation to the learner and access to the materials. So how we set up the environment is very important in naturalistic teaching because that is sort of that invitation to engage. If our learner is not interested in anything, then we don't have learning opportunities because we are following their interests. So how we set things up is very important for creating that motivation and that interest from the learner. We also, with reinforcement, are looking in naturalistic teaching to use more natural reinforcement. What are the natural reinforcers that are built into this activity or that by engaging in these behaviors will open up these other reinforcers? So that's not to say that um, there might not be some additional contrived uh, reinforcement like like tokens or whatever like you could still use tokens in a natural setting like i said it's a spectrum it's not one or the other you might be sort of somewhere in between but if my learner is already motivated to play with cars they already like cars and we are interacting with cars and we're creating learning opportunities with cars then the reinforcement might just be that we continue to engage with the cars um or that we expand upon that play and we pull out the cool slide that now the cars get to go down right so we are engaging with natural um consequences and natural reinforcers because we're already engaged with activities that our learner is is motivated by that are reinforcing for our learner so as opposed to in a more structured setting that the teacher might be deciding, hey, now it's time to work on this. Well, if the learner doesn't want to work on that, then there might need to be more uh, defined reinforcers and, and more, um, uh, more contrived reinforcement because the activity itself is not motivating to the learner. Again, this isn't to say that one is better or worse than the other. I think that they all have their time and place and it's not just A or B. There's any variation in between. I have found in my own practice that while I was taught a very structured approach, I have moved more naturalistic over time. Um, but I still find it very challenging to be successful um, with a 100% naturalistic teaching approach. I'm, I'm still probably a little bit this way. However, I've worked with people that are really good with that naturalistic um, uh, teaching strategies and creating tons of those opportunities. And it is a skill that you have to develop because it is harder to follow the learner's lead and have a plan for what can I work on? Here's five things I can work on. Now, what are they gonna do? I'm gonna make it up as I go along, which ones we're working on versus here's my lesson plan and I'm going to follow it, right? It takes more skill from the behavior analyst, the teacher, the instructor, the adult to follow the learner's lead and still create lots of learning opportunities. So it's, uh, it takes work to get there, but I have found myself definitely moving a lot more that direction. Um, and, and again, it's going to vary depending upon the learner and the skill. 
one learner may learn a lot of things in a more naturalistic setting, but have a few things that need to be pulled out into something that's more structured to start with, and then we can start moving them back. So another short topic, um, but our uh, a real quick uh, wrap up here, how to use naturalistic teaching um, to prepare. You want to identify the routines and the opportunities during the learner's day where that specific skill can be practiced. Um, you're going to determine the natural reinforcers that can be used within those activities. Arrange the environment to set up the opportunities to practice follow the learner's lead and engage within those opportunities. You're still using prompting strategies to help the learner be successful without losing the motivation to engage in the activity. So the goal is still you're providing all of the supports um, to help them. Uh, you just are doing it when they are interested in that instead of when the teacher says to do it. And then you're going to provide the natural reinforcers within the activity. So the assignment, uh, number one, describe two examples of how to set up the environment to promote language. So what would be some strategies that you could use to um, increase the amount of language that your learner is using? And that's communication strategies uh, for language. It doesn't have to be vocal spoken words. Um, but how could you arrange the environment so that they are more motivated to use or practice? practice their communication skills. And number two, describe two examples of how to collect data without a clipboard. So I didn't talk about this yet, but we're still going to be taking data. Um, but it might look different because we are going to be flowing along with our learner. So what would be some examples in a naturalistic setting where you're not running around with the clipboard, where you don't necessarily have it planned out which skill you're going to be working on? How would you take that data? What would that look like? So um, that is our topic. If you have questions or if you want to provide answers and get feedback, please post that in the comments and I'm happy to answer questions and provide feedback. If you'd like to follow along with the supervision curriculum, please subscribe so that you know when the other topics come out. And thank you so much for watching.